Tonight on News Center, snow makes an impact on a university's classes. A local bar turns into a local eatery. The Pittsburgh Penguins continue to help the university scholarships. And will the nation's top class master lead the Vulcans to a win? News Center starts right now. Good evening and welcome to CUTV News Center for the week of January 27, 2011. I'm Justin Carlo. And I'm Lauren Tarosic. Poor weather conditions were the cause of the campus closing yesterday. Students and employees tried to rush home hoping to avoid even worse weather conditions. However, those who chose Route 88 past Vulcan Village were held up in traffic for over two hours waiting for multiple accidents to be cleared. Despite smaller accidents, nothing severe was reported and business went back to normal Thursday. The Pittsburgh Penguins have been getting a lot of national and local attention over the past three seasons. Most Cal U students know this attention is putting the Pittsburgh area in the spotlight. However, it also has an impact on California. With Cal U being one of the Penguins' major partners, the school has been reaping the benefits that have come with national attention. Around campus, students show their support for the Pittsburgh Penguins by wearing jerseys, scarves, and hats. Now the Penguins are showing their support for Cal U by providing a scholarship for a California University of Pennsylvania student. The Penguins are currently holding an auction for the scholarship with items including all-star game jerseys and helmets as well as winter classic items. Penguins partnership with Cal U started last year and was born from several meetings between executives for the Penguins and Cal U. The idea was born out of a series of meetings with uh, the marketing team with Craig Butzine and also with Dr. Amante to uh, discover ways to um, make our partnership work for both of us. Pittsburgh Penguins are also benefiting from the partnership, especially when it comes to relating to their younger fan base. Our fan base is uh, always being seated with younger fans. Um, we're very much in touch with the young fan base, always trying to harvest those younger fans. So to be able to have um, a, a partnership with a great institution like Cal U, then we can, uh, you know, continue to harvest that fan base. One way the Pittsburgh Penguins expand their partnership is through the Pittsburgh Penguins Scholarship, given to a student each year with a minimum QPA of 3.0. We generate funds through uh, auctions and other mannerisms to uh, generate money for the scholarship. An auction is currently being held to benefit the scholarship with eight different items up for bid including a unique fan experience. We've got a really cool fan experience for someone to uh, attend a game here in Consol Energy Center, watch the warm-ups from our penalty box, ride the Zamboni uh, at intermission. With all the unique items the auction is expected to be successful. This is our third auction that we've done for the Penguins Endowed Scholarship and in my opinion um, will be the most lucrative because of the nice things that are in the auction. With so many different items and experiences available, there's something for everyone. Go to PittsburghPenguins.com to bid by February 5th. Reporting for CUTV News Center, I'm Allison Steinheiser. An incident that occurred last semester at the Tau Capsa Epsilon Fraternity House involving the accidental shooting of a female California University student had all criminal charges dropped on Tuesday. The office of Brownsville District Judge Joshua Canales stated that the charges of simple assault, reckless endangerment, and tampering with physical evidence were dismissed against Cal U student Dustin Fuller. Fuller underwent firearm safety and alcohol awareness programs, which resulted in the charges being dismissed. The fraternity was placed on temporary suspension. There is no word on if that suspension still holds. The popular establishment, Signature's Bar and Grill, that was closed down last fall, was permitted to reopen as a restaurant only. CUTV's Kristen Kondupa has more on the story. What used to be known as Signature's Bar and Grill is now opened as Big Mouth Bistro. Owner Linda Teslovich is complying with the DA to open just as a restaurant while the building is up for sale. After Signature's Bar and Grill was shut down, Linda Teslovich reopened as a restaurant named Big Mouth Bistro with a similar menu while the building is still up for sale. 
There's no liquor license anymore, so we're open more of a sit-down, eat-in, take-out, delivery restaurant to try to just get the word out to everybody, you know, the dorms. And there's nothing really for the freshmen and the sophomores and classes to do, so just go to that area. Big Mouth Bistro will have a special every day during the week. The specials will allow students to save money by being able to get a bigger portion of food for a cheaper price. We have whole wings, burgers, subs, uh, pastas. Uh, fries. We're going to look into some home cooking food. Now that the restaurant has been reopened, ownership is making Big Mouth Bistro a stern environment to make it safe for the community. Of course, we're a restaurant now, so of course everything is a non-smoking environment. It's open to all ages. And as usual on any business that you have, there's always the rules of no drugs, activities, uh, behaving, no loitering, uh, no weapons, and the basic things. But that's a rule for any business in general. Big Mouth Bistro is open every day for lunch. You can either dine in, take out, or have it delivered to you. For CUTV News Center, I'm Kristen Kandufa. After numerous break-ins at an area gym, the problem has been solved by members of California University's track and field team. Jordan Miller has more of how the staff handled the situation. The Lemoyne Multicultural Center in East Washington experienced break-ins. This inspired Roger Kingdom, head of track and field here at California University, to jump in and start a program for this gym. While the Lemoyne Center was closed, it experienced break-ins with no reports of stolen property. After reopening, this gave Joyce Elias the chance to contact Roger Kingdom about starting a track and field program. Once she approached me and started speaking about uh, the possibility of maybe uh, developing a program, then I sat with her and I gave us some ideas on some of the things that um, she could possibly do. Then the next question was, she asked me if I could help. And that was the beginning of us getting involved with helping the Lemoyne Center. The program is not only aimed at helping children exercise, but will give the children something to do and keep them out of trouble. I'm pretty excited. I think it's a great thing. Um, we're getting to go down there and work with some younger um, aged uh, students and kind of guide them not only in track and field but try to provide them some good role models from the university and from the community to help just kind of give them some guidance outside of just exercise and track but more guidance to help them along with life. Nearly 60 children have enrolled in the program so far. This program allows California students as well as the track and field coaching staff to get involved. It was a bunch of little kids so it's to be expected. It was a little chaotic but it was definitely a learning experience for both us and them. Well, first and foremost, I feel that this will help the kids because it gives them something to do and something to believe in. And while you are there performing and participating in track and field, it also gives you an, uh, an opportunity to develop self-esteem, uh, to learn what leadership, to learn what comradeship is all about, and working together as a team. This program will be held every Thursday for six weeks at the Lemoyne Multicultural Center. For CUTV News Center, I'm Jordan Miller. With the current winter temperatures rising, many students who live off campus are having to turn up their heat, resulting in expensive gas and electric bills. CUTV's own Miriam Mason spoke with students about how they're dealing with the cold and the bills. With the prices of heating bills going up everywhere, CUTV spoke to students on how to help save you money through this pricey time of year. With the cold weather ranging from zero degrees and up, students take precautions to help weatherproof their homes. Whenever it started to get cold out, we went and got some foam spray from your local Home Depot or Lowe's in order to keep the cracks from the windows and doors filled so no air and draft would come through. 69, 70 degrees and just leaving it there and don't touch it because it'll keep it at that and it actually saves me money than turning it down and turning it back up when I get in type of deal. When the weather decreases, electric and gas bills go up monthly. Uh, probably about uh, it's been progressively going up. Uh, I'd say every month it's about twenty dollars more, so it's 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 up to about you know eighty dollars now, um, divided by the couple of us that live in the house. Um, but it still makes it expensive for us because with the heating bill going up, so does the electric bill. Turning up the heat is not the only way to stay warm. Many students keep the heat down in their homes by layering up. Putting on some extra clothes this time of year, uh, some sweatshirts, some space heaters, keep us warm. I have an electric blanket, works great. Uh, that's about it, you know, you just got to dress warm for the snow. For more information on how to save money on your heating costs, visit www.hubpages.com. Reporting for CETV News Center, I'm Miriam Mason. Well, I know I was certainly affected by the cold and uh, having to deal with it. What about you? 
Well, yesterday my black boots were ruined when I had to walk through the slush and the <laughs> snow, so I'm a little bit upset about the winter conditions yeah. outside. <laughs> Find out if these wintry conditions will continue next on News Center when student meteorologist CJ Hawley has your weather report. Stay tuned.